In this video, let's go through all the HivePress settings in the HivePress settings section to make sure that the website is set up and functions according to the requirements. Let's start with the listing step. Here, you can choose a page that displays all the listings. At the moment, let's leave it empty, but later in this course I'll show you how to add pages and we'll come back to this option. If this option is checked, then the listings page will display categories instead of listings until some specific category is selected. With these three options you can set up the number of regular, featured and related listings displayed per page. Also, note that if something is not clear, you can hover on the question icon for an extra description. Additionally, you can check our docs or ask a question on the HivePress community forum. For example, Thanks to this clue, we know that this option allows us to generate listing titles based on custom fields automatically. It's a useful feature if you are running a real estate website, for example. If you have custom fields like accommodation type and square footage, then the title can be generated based on these fields – apartment 142 square footage. Here, you can enable zoom in the listing image gallery. In the search section, you can select which default fields you want to show in the listing search form. As you can see at the moment we can choose only keywords, categories and dates, but if you add new searchable attributes, they will also appear in this drop-down list. In the submission section, you can adjust the listing submission settings. For example, you can link custom terms of use page to require users to accept them before adding a new listing. If you are building a rental website solely for your own items or another type of website that doesn't require users to add their own listings, check this option to hide the front-end listing form. Note that the listing moderation is enabled by default, so the site admins will have to approve every listing manually before it appears on the front-end. And check this option if you want to publish listings automatically without approving them first. This one allows users to report listings for any reason that violates your website terms. If you want listings to be published for a limited time, in this section you can set their expiration period by setting the number of days after which a listing expires. Also, here you can set the number of days after which an expired listing is deleted permanently. Let's save changes and move to the next step. Within this tab, you can set up the reviews functionality. Please note that in HivePress, users who add listings are called vendors, meaning that anyone who adds at least one listing becomes a vendor. Using this option, you can allow users to leave multiple reviews per listing, and with this one, you can disable moderation if you want to allow publishing reviews without checking them first. By checking this option, you can allow vendors to reply to reviews left by users. The next is the Hosts tab. Please note that hosts and vendors are synonyms in HivePress. In the Display section you can define whether you want to display hosts on the front end at all. If so, then similarly to listings you can select a page that displays all hosts and set the number of hosts per page. This option defines how the host name will be displayed. By default, it's always a username. However, if you create some host attributes, you'll also be able to set them here to synchronize the host name with, for example, a company name, etc. In the search section, you can select which default fields you want to show in the host search form. Finally, in the registration section, you can allow direct registration. As I mentioned before, by default to become a host, a user has to add at least one listing. But if you enable this option, then users will be able to register as hosts without submitting listings at all. That's all for hosts. Now let's move to the Users tab. In the Display Name field, you can set how user names are displayed on the front end. You can leave it as it is, simply the first name or, if your users agree to share their full names, you can select the full name option instead. A more private option is displaying the first name and the first letter of the last name. In the registration section, you can enable or disable user registration. This depends on your website niche, but in most cases, 
it's better to allow website visitors to register because a user account is required for sending messages, adding listings to favorites, and of course, booking listings. If you select the registration terms page here, users will have to tick a checkbox with a link to this page in the registration form before registering an account. You can enable this option if you want to generate a username from the email address automatically, instead of showing a separate username field in the registration form. I recommend enabling email verification to ensure that every email on your website is authentic. Also, it's really important to restrict access to the WordPress backend for regular users to prevent any potential security issues. So, let's move on. In the sending section, you can enable attachments to allow users to send attachments via messages. And here, you can select the file types that can be attached. If you enable monitoring, then you and your website administrators will be able to monitor all the conversations on your rental marketplace. Here you can set a list of blocked keywords. This means that all the messages containing these keywords will be blocked. In the storage section you can enable or disable storing messages in the database. When disabled, this option basically sends all the messages via email instead of storing and displaying them on the site. If this option is enabled, you can set the number of days to store messages on the site before they are deleted automatically. Alright, now let's move to the booking step. First of all, you can select the booking categories, meaning that you can define the listing categories where bookings should be available. For example, if you are building a real estate website where some properties are for sale and others are for rent, you can enable bookings only for one of the listing categories. Leave this field empty if you want to enable bookings for all categories. Here you can define which booking statuses will block dates in the calendar. For example, by default if a user books certain dates, those dates won't be available for other users to book, even if it's not paid yet. But if you remove unpaid from this field, then different users will be able to book the same listings for the same date, but the confirmation gets the users who pays first. If you check this option, the booking availability will be managed per vendor instead of per listing. For example, you can enable it if you have tour guides on your website that offer different services. So, if one of the services is booked, then users won't be able to book another one for the same time. By checking this option, you can allow hosts to synchronize their availability calendars with third-party platforms using an iCal URL. For example, if some of your hosts list their properties on Airbnb, they will be able to synchronize their Airbnb calendar. In that way, if someone books their property on Airbnb, those dates will also be blocked on your website automatically. Here, you can allow reserving multiple places per booking. For example, if you are building a real estate booking marketplace, this option will allow vendors to set how many guests can stay at their accommodation. Also, take a look at this feature. It may be really useful if you are building, for example, an equipment rental website. Imagine that you have 5 chainsaws to rent out. If this is checked, you can set that a listing with a chainsaw can be booked up to 5 times for the same time period. By default, there are overnight bookings, but if you want to enable daily bookings instead, you can check this option. For example, if you rent out some sports equipment like bikes, it makes sense to switch to daily bookings. Here. You can switch to time slots if you want to accept time-based bookings instead of daily and nightly ones. It's a useful option that allows you to rent something out for several hours instead of the whole day or night. You can also enable multiple time slots. For example, if you rent out bicycles and your booking time slot is one hour, then if you check this option, users will be able to book a bicycle for several hours in a row. In the Time Categories field, you can choose where time-based bookings should be enabled. For example, in the case at hand, I want to enable time-based bookings for the Tours and Sports Equipment categories. You can leave this field empty if you want to enable time slots for all categories. Enable time zones if you want to allow time zone indication. 
It's a useful feature if vendors are in different time zones. For example, if users book and line appointments with vendors from different time zones, they will have an indication of a time zone, so they know when their online appointment starts. Finally, there are confirmation and expiration sections. Here, you can select a page with terms that users have to accept before making a booking. Here, you can set the number of days after which a pending or unpaid booking is cancelled. It allows you to prevent pointless bookings when someone books a listing and then disappears. If that happens, the booking will be cancelled automatically. And here, set the number of days after which a past or cancelled booking is deleted permanently. Click on the Save Changes button and let's move to the Geolocation tab. Here are various settings that allow you to set up the geolocation functionality on your website. For example, here you can select the content types that should have the location features. By default, there are two types available – hosts and listings. In this field, you can choose the provider of maps and location data for your site. Currently, HivePress is integrated with Google Maps and Mapbox platforms. In the previous steps, we have already chosen Mapbox as a map provider but you can decide to use Google Maps instead. Here, you can leave the countries field empty if your website allows listings from all over the world or select specific countries to restrict the location selection. Here, you can set a radius to define the location search area. It will allow users to see all the listings within a specified distance from a selected location. Alternatively, you can check this option to allow users to adjust the radius on their own in the search form. Also, check this option if your country uses miles instead of kilometers for measuring distances. If you want to create a page for each region, you can check this option too. By default the location search is based on the radius, but if you want to enable search by regions such as countries, states and counties, you should check this option. When enabled, this will automatically generate pages similar to categories in the listings regions section and each page will display listings from the current region. Finally, if you want to hide the exact location on a map and show a cycle area instead of the map marker, check this option. But in the case at hand, I'll leave it as it is. OK, now let's check the integration tab that contains all the set party integration settings, like ReCAPTCHA, Google Maps and Mapbox. Also, if you purchased any of the premium HivePress themes or extensions, here you can set your license key in the HivePress Store section to enable automatic updates. As you can see, we already have the Mapbox API key set, but let's also enable ReCAPTCHA to protect the front-end forms from spam bots. To do this, it's necessary to sign up for an API key pair for this site. Let's go to the Google ReCAPTCHA service page. I'll leave the link to this page in the video description. Now I'll briefly fill in all the fields. After you fill in the site details, simply copy both keys, go to your website and paste them in the corresponding fields. Then, select the forms you want to protect with the CAPTCHA. In this case, I'll choose the user registration form to prevent the spam bots from registering. That's it! We have just finished setting up HivePress. Now, let's move to the next video where I'll show you how to add new listings.